answer that question, you need to have a little bit of a history lesson and, and understand that 50 plus years before the games actually came to Beijing, China followed really a Soviet model. Um, what we mean by that is that very limited promotion of physical activity and education from a scholastic perspective. So as we have more promotion of mass participation in sports within the country and really the national pride that came along with it came with a shift towards changing the culture of sport in the country and looking to promote sport amongst the youth. So you have 400 million plus growing youths across China which is generally defined as you know young people under 30 years of age participating in sport. This is going this and has had an amazing effect on a positive multiplier effect on brands growing their businesses both from traditional sports wear and sports performance brands um, but also consumer brands as well and then the second real impact of Beijing is that it really accelerated the knowledge of sports marketing as a as a marketing solution to help brands connect with their consumers and also help businesses grow in mainland China and, and you're seeing the fruits of that right now um, which we highlighted in the article um, with Adidas growing double digit growth in Asia Pacific, really led by China, and how Nike have grown from a hundred million business from being set up in the early 90s to a six billion dollar business right now. And if you're then shifting onto the consumer brands, um, how domestic brands have also maintained their market share and also continued their legacy as supporters of the Olympic movement. For example, Ely with their continuing their 12 year relationship, and which will, will definitely be seeing them promote national heroes in, in 2020. <music>to that question and I think it's very similar to what we're seeing right now in the global trends in sports content both the distribution as well as consumption of sports content so from a traditional perspective CCTV is still the most powerful media entity and broadcaster in China um, all the way from Olympic Games to snooker world championships are all broadcasted on, on CCTV and channels um, but what is really important to note that is even before the days of the zone and subscription paid uh, mobile apps for, for sports content, five years uh, China has predicated these trends. So you're seeing the proliferation of mobile phone technology, back end payments, as well as cashless integration with Alipay and WeChat, which means that fans, wherever they are, even if they're unbanked, um, are able to pay and consume sports content anywhere, whether that's snackable content or live stream content as well. And um, we see this, certainly from my perspective, growing and, and becoming more of a dominant disruptor in, in the next three years, especially with international events coming and live streaming rights um, becoming even more valuable. extremely bullish on the industry having spent 10 years in the market working with brands rights holders as well as athletes there really is a lot of positive trends for the way that I foresee um, happening in the next certainly three to five years with Beijing creating history by becoming the first city in the world to host both the summer and winter Olympics um, that's gonna that has already um, created opportunities and announcements for on behalf of domestic brands supporting the Olympic movement so that will only continue you're seeing the AFC Cup being held across different cities across China from tier one to tier two three um, this will allow brands who are not necessarily established in tier one two markets but also brands to use sports marketing as part of the marketing mix especially with categories which are extremely important on the on the national agenda and then really we're looking at the emergence of the digital athlete and esports and games china is a global powerhouse and the all of the major developers are based in china and together with joint ventures with 
international developers and brands. And we're seeing the League of Legends World Championships come back to China for the second time after 2017 in the Bird's Nest to Shanghai at the end of the year. And I think you're just going to see a lot more endemic but also non-endemic brands entering that space. And I think sports performance on the field will drive a lot of activity off of it. And the thirst for national heroes will never subside. And with that performance off the field, you're going to see a lot more activity in government initiatives. Thank you.